Unless you kind of like sitting back with popcorn watching the Republican Party tear itself to shreds, you might wonder why you need to care about the fact that some Washington politician named Jim DeMint is leaving the Senate to go to some Washington think tank. It's the definition of a beltway story. But you should care. You should care because you care about the quality of the Republican Party's thinking. A lot of thinking for both parties in modern Washington is done by think tanks, think tanks like the Heritage Foundation. And DeMint's move shows something really important and upsetting about the direction those think tanks are taking. But before we get to that, let me tell you the story of the individual mandate. Uh, the individual mandate, the requirement that all Americans who can afford to buy health insurance do so or pay a penalty, is the heart of Romney Care and Obamacare. And it made its major Washington debut in a 1989 paper by the Heritage Foundation. The piece was titled Assuring Affordable Health Care for All Americans. And Stuart Butler, the foundation's health care expert, argued four years later, the mandate, he, he argued that it was like a seatbelt, that you needed to have it just like we have auto insurance. Four years later, the mandate appeared in the Health Equity and Access Reform Today Act. That was the Senate Republicans' big alternative to Bill Clinton's health care plan. Twelve years after that, the mandate appeared in Mitt Romney's health care plan. And that health care plan caught the eye of a young and very influential politician named Jim DeMint. In 08, he endorsed Mitt Romney for president, saying, quote, He has demonstrated when he stepped into government in a very difficult state that he could work in a difficult partisan environment, take some good conservative ideas like private health insurance, and apply them to the need to have everyone insured. So Heritage won. They came up with this idea, a conservative way to do health care reform, an alternative to big government, single-payer socialism. And they made it the law in Massachusetts. And they even got Democrats to embrace it, to give up their big government ways. For a think tank, that is the dream. And they could not possibly regret having done it more. Today, both the Heritage Foundation and its new president, Jim DeMint, agree that the individual mandate is not just bad policy. It is terrible, no good, horrible, unconstitutional, the primary threat to liberty policy. Their idea, now horrible and judged horrible only really after Democrats began endorsing it. Look, Jim DeMint is a politician, very Republican, very conservative, very partisan politician. Flip-flopping to try and make health care reform, in DeMint's words, quote, the Waterloo for a Democratic president, well, uh, I don't want to call it his job exactly, but it's not shocking. It's kind of what you do. But it's not what you do if you're a think tank. You're supposed to hold the line on good ideas. You're supposed to be where policy trumps politics. DeMint's ascension to head of the Heritage Foundation is both a perfect match and a disturbing one. Think tanks are really important in Washington. They're where the politicians get their policy ideas, where the staffers get their policy analysis, where the media figures look to get an informed take on whether something makes sense or not. Their leaders have often had one foot in the political world and one in the policy world. Strobe Talbot, head of the Brookings Institution, worked at the State Department and then headed Yale Center for the Study of Globalization. Arthur Brooks, president of the American Enterprise Institute, was recruited from Syracuse University, where he was a Louis A. Bantle professor of business and government policy. The Center for American Progress, probably the most activist think tank on the left, is led by Neera Tandon, Hillary Clinton's former policy director. Heritage has always been an unusually politicized think tank. It was founded by conservatives who thought the American Enterprise Institute, which was then the big conservative think tank, was too reluctant to involve itself in partisan politics. But even Heritage is headed by a former policy guy. Edwin John Fielner Jr. began his career at the Center for Strategic and International Studies before moving to the Hill and becoming director of the Republican Study Committee, the policy arm of House conservatives. But to mint doesn't have even one foot, really, in the policy world. He's a politician who made his mark practicing a particularly hard-edged form of electoral politics, launching primary challenges against insufficiently conservative Republicans. You don't name Jim DeMint head of your think tank because you're trying to improve the quality of your scholarship. You name DeMint head of your think tank because you're trying to make your think tank a more powerful force in conservative politics. That is not necessarily a criticism of DeMint. He's probably the right guy for that job. But it's a shame that that is the job Heritage seems to want done. The right really could use more intellectually honest think tanks. It needs better scholarship. Their problem in the last few years has been that they've had too few good, appealing, conservative policy ideas and way too many really, really conservative politicians. A place like Heritage could, under the right leadership, help reverse that trend. Instead, it is poised to accelerate it.
That does it for us tonight. We'll see you again tomorrow. Don't forget, you can check out my work at wonkblog.com or follow me at Twitter at twitter.com slash Ezra Klein and on Facebook, facebook.com slash Ezra Klein. It's time for the last word with Lawrence O'Donnell. Have a great night.